work on the side. You know when you go to a restaurant, maybe you order a hamburger, what do you like to order on the side? Maybe fries, applesauce, maybe a tossed salad, right? So work on the side is going to help us get good at long division. Will you always need to work on the side? No. But what did I say about my fourth graders? You are beginners of long division. We all have to be beginners when we learn something new. So pick up your pencil and look at your side work. The very first column are your three facts. Three times one, call it out everyone. Three. Three, three times two. Six. 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 Fill it in. Three times three. Nine. 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 Fill it in. Your basic multiplication facts are so important to know. They're going to help you so much. What's happening in the next column of our side work? Yes? Ones are turning into tens. What's happening when ones are going into tens? You're right. Yes? Um, the numbers get bigger. The numbers get bigger. And well, how, how do the numbers get bigger? What is it that you learned this year about how those numbers get bigger? They, sh they shift. They shift. And what do they shift? By to the left. They shift to the left. That was an important rule we, rule we learned. And when they shift to the left, how much larger are they getting? One. Ten times bigger. So let's think about these ten times bigger numbers. Start at the top of the column. Three times ten, everybody. Thirty. Write it in the blank. Three times twenty? Sixty. Three times thirty? Ninety. Ninety. Look at your first column. Look at your second column. Do you see those shifts to the left? Yes. Yeah. All right. So we're going to move to the next column. Joshua, what do you think is going to have, happen in this next column? We're going to get even bigger. By how much? By 10. By 10 times bigger than the second column. So you ready to try this with me? Yeah. Okay, here we go. 3 times 100? 300. 300. Write it down. Three times two hundred. Six hundred. Three times four hundred. I heard two different ways to say it. I think they're both correct. I heard one thousand two hundred. And what did somebody I heard another way? Twelve hundred. They mean the same thing, don't they? Okay? We're gonna use that side work now, and I'm gonna start by modeling for you. I'm going to be the teacher. You're going to be the learner. I just need eyes up here. Okay? So to start with the big seven, I'm going to create a big seven on the board. Notice my seven doesn't go in a diagonal, does it? My seven goes straight down. And we just did side work. Alyssa, I like the way you're listening. We just did side work on our threes, didn't we? So I'm gonna make three my divisor. Say that word? Divisor. Three is the what? Divisor. Divisor, okay? And I'm going to pick some digits, and I'm going to make, and I'm just gonna pick any digits between zero and nine. I'm gonna do four, and an eight, and a six. What number did I create? 486. 486. I wonder how many groups of three I can take out of 486. So watch me model this for you. So looking at my side work, I know that I could take three 100 times, and that will get me pretty close to 486. Three taken 100 times. Those are the words I want you using with me. Three taken 100 times. Now I come over and I subtract. Six ones minus zero ones. Eight tens minus zero tens. Eight. Four hundred.
hundreds minus three hundreds. One what? One hundreds. Okay. So now I know I can still take some threes out of there. This is a lot larger than three. So on my side work, I like three times fifty. And on my side work, 3 times 50 equals 150. And then I subtract again. 6 ones minus 0 ones. 6, six what's the unit? 1. 6 ones. 8 tens minus 5 tens. 3 tens. 3 tens. 100 minus 100? 0. 0. 0. 100. 100. Okay? Now I'm down to 36. So I take a look at my side work again, and I think about groups of three that could come out of 36. Well, I know from my side work that I can take three 10 times. That gives me 30. And now I can subtract. I see a few of you going, because I think you know the answer. Six ones minus zero ones. Six. Six. Three tens minus three tens. Zero. Zero tens. Okay. I need another line. Oh my goodness, this is a piece of cake for me. I can take three two times and I get six. And six ones minus six ones is zero. Now. This is where it gets really exciting, guys. This is part of my answer. This is part of my answer. And this is part, and this is part. I call those partial quotients. And the answer is called a quotient. So I have part, 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 part. I can add those mentally. I can put them together with mental math. Maybe you can help me. 100 plus 50? 150 plus 10? 160 plus 2? And my quotient goes up here. And I have discovered that I need 162 threes to divide out of 486. Do you notice that I write my expression here first? On your big seven, I want to see the expression on the side first. Good. Do you notice it's an expression with no equal sign? Right? No equal signs here. So three times 200 was what, everybody? 600. Now we line it up. We are getting close now. How many threes can we take out of that? Yes. Three times 10 is 30. Can I take 30 away from 16? No. That would be too much, wouldn't it? We don't want to go too much. What would you pick? Three yes. times five. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing heads now. Yeah. Three. Taken five times is 15. Five simple ones. 16 minus 15. One. Okay. Now, can I take another group of three, Gianni? Can I take a three out of here? Yeah. Is there a group of three in here? Oh, I don't have enough to make another group of three, do I? So this is what we call the remainder. And division is that only operation where you're going to find a remainder. Do you have remainders in addition? No. Subtraction? No. Multiplication? No. No. But with division, we have these things called remainders, don't we? Leftovers. All right. Now, remember, does anybody remember what these were called? 
Partial, partial quotients. Partial quotients. I hear partial products a lot because you guys are good with those. These, because it's division, are partial quotients. We took 203s, 53s, 23s, 5 threes. Add those up mentally if you can. And in fourth grade, we put the letter R and we say one. But when you get to fifth grade, we're going to really look at remainders even more than that. Okay? How are you feeling about the big seven? Good. Three. We have 642. Use your side work. And go ahead and try to work on this in your own. If you get stuck, raise your hand. Exactly 600. So, and how did you know that? Because 3 times 2 is 6. And if we put that in hundreds, it would be 600. So, 600 is taken away. And I'm left with 42. I would say that 3 times 10 would be my best choice right now. So 3 times 10 would be 3, and I would have 12 left. After that, I would, I know, I already know that 12 is 6 times 2. So, so I will do so three times four is also three times four is twelve, and twelve taken away, another left zero. And I would add all of these together, and I would get two hundred fourteen. And where do you put that two hundred fourteen when you're done with it? Two hundred fourteen go up here. And what's that number? What are these numbers called? The, these numbers are called partial quotients. Can you point to your partial quotients for me? Excellent. Very good job. What's your name? Connor Swartz. So what I did, I started with a simple number, so I can just get simple numbers, so I can just get to zeros. Because I knew three times nine to get nine, it would make it zero. Then I can do three times twenty easier to get sixty. Then I done eight that night, so it would be all zeros to make it easier. So I done three times 20 to get 600, then subtracted that to get 400, then three times 50 would equal 150. So if, so you can do it like, then it would equal 50 then. Three times 10 would equal 30, so I know I can do, Three times wait. So, so three times ten would equal thirty. Then I got twenty. So, so twenty minus fifteen equals five. Then when you subtract five from three, you got a remainder of two. So the answer is two eighty nine remained remainder two. Nice job. So I want to look over here again. So. Tell me about how, what you did with all of these over here. I, I, I had a lot of numbers, so to make it easier, I thought I would start with the digits. So I started with the ones and I added those okay. to get nine. Mm -hmm. Then I done the tens, so 50, 10, 20, and one. Then, so I get 80. Then I put a plus sign right there. Mm -hmm. So and now I'm adding those. Then I had 20 left, so 200 left, so I put it right here in the set there. Then I got my answer, 289. Jaden. What, what's your name? Jaden. Thank you. What I really like about Jaden's strategy is Jaden had an alternative approach. He really didn't try to get the biggest chunk out initially. That's fine. What Jaden wanted to do was land on zeros. And when Jaden found ways to get himself to all zeros except in the hundreds place, he really had a, a nice strategy here. It completely made sense to him. So that's
That's, that's what I really want to encourage in students. Let them do what makes sense to them and look for the number sense in the work that they're doing. I mean, when I looked at his initially, I thought, oh no, three times three, we're gonna be here forever. But when I realized what he was doing, I, I knew just to back off because he had a strategy and I wasn't gonna intervene with his good thinking.